Hey guys, David Lambrow here. Today on this video, I wanted to show you one of my favorite things to do, and that is cooking steak on a tripod over an open flame. Stick with me, and I'll show you how we do this. Thanks. So there was nothing uh, live over there that was small enough to make a good tripod, so you have to make a really big tripod with dead wood. All right guys, so the first thing that you'll need is uh, three sticks about the same length in order to make a, a tripod. And you gotta work with what nature gives you. And this time that we're out here, I did not find any, any smaller, shorter uh, live sticks uh, to cut up. So I found a couple really long dead ones and that'll work just as good. Uh, it has to be really long if it's dead because if it's short, it will burn. <laughs> a lot faster. So if it's if it's longer, then it can stay higher over the fire and it won't won't burn. Hopefully, that's the hope. So now we have to lash them together. All right, guys. So next thing you want to do is you want to tie your bank line to one of these sticks first off. Um, and the the two that I like to use, and I kind of go back and forth on which which two that I like to use. But I like to use either the constrictor knot or the ground line hitch. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate the ground line hitch tonight. So it starts out just like a clove hitch, okay? Bring it over the top, you go over itself, just like that, okay? And then the only difference is you do not go underneath your, your cross, the one that goes across, you go over it and underneath your first line, okay? Can you see that? That is called a ground line hitch. And in my opinion, this one is a lot tighter and more jamming than the clove hitch. So I like to use it. Now, next, you wanna make sure that your, the base of your tripod are all equal, just like that. Come back up here. And try and get these ends to be pretty close together like so. Okay, now for the straight hitch, or for the straight uh, lashing, just wrap it around once, twice, three times. And that's really all you need. That's the lashing, now you're doing the frapping. Now you go in between each one individually. And you don't really need to go any more than three times on this one either. Here's where it really tightens everything up, make that nice and tight. Doesn't have to be too tight because you still want this to, to be able to move around, um, at least so that you can maneuver it and set it up. Now, if this was something like a stool, you would really want to make it nice and tight. There's my third one, okay. Now I'm gonna come over and do my last frapping here. This one, and that fire sure is hot, <laughs> feels good. One more time. Okay, now the way that I like to finish it off is basically I like to tie uh, what would be like a hole and a half hitch, I guess. <laughs> it's not really called anything, but if you know what a half hitch is, then you can make this one. You just go around inside that inside of the loop two more times. So here's a half hitch, just like that, just once. So there's a half hitch. All right, I like to go and do. I guess that would be a whole hitch, and one more time would make it a hitch and a half. And that creates more surface area for it to bite onto which means it should not come undone as easily. <laughs> okay, and there you go. 
And you know that point when you realize that you're... So the next thing that you need on a, on a cooking tripod is you need cross beams that go across the tripod just like this. So what I'm doing is I'm hacking off all these limbs. There we go. And uh, a side benefit is you get extra firewood. And need a little work. Yeah. Scattered around. And... Now these cross beams can either be live or dead. Uh, if your tripod is big enough, you can get away with putting dead cross beams on it because it'll be far enough away from the fire that they won't get burned. But for the uh, the cross beams that go inside, you definitely have to find live firewood, or you definitely want to find some live twigs or branches or sticks, because those are going to be directly over the fire. When you're a man, you have to untangle lots. <laughs> At some point in your life, some woman will ask you to untangle, oh no. These cross beams, you want to try and have, uh, you want to try and find as straight as sticks as possible, uh, and also you want to try and clean them off so that there's not a not a whole lot of you know bumps and and twigs hanging off of them. That's what I'm doing right now, just to try and make this thing uh, nice and smooth. And uh, the next thing that you want to do is you take your paracord or your cordage again, cut yourself some nice length of a cord. And you tie it on there, just like the first time. Well, I'm gonna do my ground ground line hitch again. Okay, now this one, this lashing here, I'm not sure what's called. Uh, I'm sure that there's a technical name for it, but I'm just gonna wrap it around, you know, quite a few number of times. It may be called the like cross lashing or something like that. But basically, that's all you do, and then you just tie it off up here. I should have cut myself more cord. <laughs> and I'm going to be using that uh, hitch and a half hitch that I showed you earlier. If I have enough line. Actually, I'm just going to do a full hitch. Use your best judgment to see how high that you want to put your cross beams. You really don't have to do this a whole lot, a whole too many times, uh, simply because whenever you put weight down on it, Okay, you're not gonna put a whole lot of weight on it anyways. It's just steak. <laughs> and uh, I wanna try and save as much line as I can for next time that we come out. But yeah, once you get, once you get all three cross beams on here, this thing isn't going anywhere. It'll be nice and sturdy. If you just want to make it uh, nice and quick, just do a slip knot. Okay, like so, and then slide it over. over both of them just like that and slip knot it down that way you don't have to spend too much time wor worrying about your hitch Thanks. all right so here you have a pretty decent cooking tripod put a little bit of pressure on the cross beams to see how steady they are and I think we're good to go. Now we really just need to find some live sticks to go across this way. And I found one here so far. I'm gonna have to go uh, out searching for more. Now you don't have to shave the whole thing down if you don't want to, only the parts where you are gonna be cooking on it. Using the back side of my knife here to smooth over the edges and get off most of those furs. And it's gonna go on there like that. Okay, beautiful. Now we gotta go find one more.
All right, guys. Now that we have two live sticks that are shaved down pretty well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick them over the fire and burn off those little hairs that are still on it because I don't want that in my steak. I don't like hairy steak. You don't always have to do this because you're not always going to have those little fibrous hairs that, that are left over. All right, so once you have all the hairs burned off of it, and, yet, and you're left with just a bare barkless stick, you are ready to start cooking. Okay. Oh yeah, that's definitely hot enough to cook a beautiful steak. Glorious. Now it's actually easier to cook a steak like this whenever you uh, have a bone that goes through it. We intended on buying one with a bone through it, but these look just too good. <laughs> and there you go. Now you want these sticks here to not be to not be really thick because that part where the stick is at is not going to get cooked. So you want to try and find a happy medium between sturdy and thin. That way you get a pretty good cooking uh, area on the, on most of the steak. And now you just let it slow cook. All right, that's it. Hang out with us for a minute and uh, we'll show you the end result. All right guys, so here we are. It's been about 15 minutes in and they're looking pretty good. And uh, we were trying something new tonight by getting a steak without the bone in it. And we've realized why we always buy a steak with the bone in it. Because we dropped both of these steaks in the fire, each at separate times. So, not a failure, but we have figured out something for you guys. That if you are going to be cooking steak over a fire this way, be sure it has a bone through it. That way you can lay the bone across these cross beams and it will keep it there pretty pretty good. If you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, share it. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate your views and stick around, stay tuned for more videos in the future to come. Thanks guys, bye.